welcome writing buddies. Out of all the videos that I make and different types of videos I make, one of the styles that I really enjoy making the most would be the technology videos. Looking at where bikes started, at looking at all the different obscure makes of bikes out there, and the technology that has advanced our sport. What I wanna look at today is I'm going to have a look at the single shock rear suspension. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so and hit the subscribe button. So the single shock rear suspension, we all know that Yamaha introduced the single shock rear suspension to us in production form in 1975 with the B series of motocross bikes. But it has a longer history than that. It goes back to the mid 60s when a very smart Belgian engineer, Lucia Tilkens, designed his own single shock rear suspension system. That is what Yamaha based theirs on as well, which they run through to about 1981. In 1968, he built his first bike using this system. It was a CZ, it used a Citroen shock for the shock, that went up into the backbone of the frame. They did a lot of testing with this bike. What they found was this rear suspension system actually gave the big horsepower that the big manufacturers were chasing at that era to get it to track better and handle better and they could develop the travel a bit longer. Of course, all the big manufacturers, all they were after was big horsepower. That's what they thought was going to win races, was big horsepower but they couldn't get the horsepower to the ground. And that's where Tilkins come in. As I said, 68 was his first bike. 1971, they did a lot of extensive testing with Suzuki. They built a bike based around Suzuki and they tested the absolute wheels off this thing. And it performed very well. But as we know, Suzuki didn't come out with it. After the testing, Suzuki went, no, nah, nah, not really for us. We can't see it happening. It's a bit, creates too much weight on the bike and it lifted the center of gravity. So Tilkins develops a bike with Yamaha. 1973, the 250 works bikes come out with one of them with single shock rear suspension designed by Tilkins. That bike goes out, wins its first race in the World GPs. That bike goes on to win the World Championships in 1973. By the end of 73, all the Yamaha Works bikes were running the single shock rear suspension system developed by Tilkins. Yamaha used that basic system that Tilkins had developed with the rear frame and the shock going up through the backbone of the frame of the bike until 1981. When the J series of Yamahas came out in the big bikes, they started using a linkage rear suspension. By the early 80s, everyone started to release their single shock rear suspension. Of course, we all know the, the Jap bikes, Honda had the ProLink, Suzuki had their amazing full floater system, Kawasaki with their Unitrack, and Yamaha developed their own linkage system as well. And most of the Euros did the same. KTM, Mako, everyone developed their own linkage rear suspension. One of the last manufacturers that I can think of to go to a linkage or single shock rear suspension was Husqvarna. They stuck with the twin shocks as long as they could. Admittedly, the twin shock Huskies right up until they went to the single shock, the suspension worked absolutely amazing. They were just a little bit fat in the back end where the shocks were. During the late 70s, there were a few other manufacturers to improvise from Tilkin's design. One of them, probably the most popular known one, would be Kramer. It was different, but it looked very similar. Of course, you look at bikes from, let's take 1964 for example, so a 1964 CZ, and you look at a 1974 CZ. Yes, the they changed a lot, but visually, they are still based around the same sort of design. 
But in the 70s, you look at, let's take a Yamaha, a 1974 YZ, and then look at a 1984 YZ, still 10 years difference, and the difference is amazing. In that 10 year period, so much changed. Yes, in the earlier, in the 60s up to the mid 70s, up to about 74, 75, bikes developed, they changed, but visually they looked very much the same. Two shocks at the back, drum brakes front and rear, air-cooled engines, by this time two-stroke engines, fuel tank seat, no safety seats at this time. Uh, so it didn't really look that much different, but from 74 to 1984, huge difference. Obviously in that era, there is a few other things as well that change the look of the bike. And I, I might do another video with those ones. One of them being water cooling. That made a massive difference to the look of a bike. And also disc brakes. That changed the visual look of a bike dramatically. But I'm gonna leave those ones to another video later on. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you go back through my library, check out some of my other videos. Be sure to hit that subscribe button. You might enjoy this other video that's just popped up down the bottom of the screen as well. Tell me what you think is probably one of the biggest changes look of bikes. And we'll catch you next time.